Good evening. Uh, welcome to Queen Anne's County uh, Board of Education work sessions for April 21st, 2021. Um, Mark, do we have a... Sure. Pursuant to the general provisions, Article Section 3-305 and 3-101, I move for the Board of Education of Queen Anne's County to meet in the closed and executive sessions to discuss the appoint appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointed employees over whom this public body has jurisdiction, to consider matters that relate to negotiations, to consult with counsel, and to perform an administrative function. Second. We have a motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries 5-0. We'll be back at 6 o'clock. Thank you. Good evening. Welcome back to the uh, Queen Anne's County Board of Education work sessions for April the 21st, 2021. Will you stand for the pledge? Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Um, has everybody had a chance? Uh, okay. Approval agenda. Motion. Motion to accept the agenda as presented. Second. Second. All those in favor, by saying aye. 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 Move some proofs 5 0. Uh, you've had a chance to look at the minutes uh, for open sessions for April the 7th, 2021. Has everybody had a chance to look at that? Do I have a motion? I make a motion to accept the open and closed and executive closed uh, meeting minutes from April 7th, of 2021. Second. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries 5 0. Okay, Dr. Kane, presentation on. Uh, budget discussion with Kerwin? We do. We have um, a budget presentation where we'll break them up into two. We're going to talk about Kerwin or Blueprint for Maryland's Future, that funding, and we're also going to talk about the American Rescue Plan education funding, also known as ESSER 3. So, Mrs. Tower, CFO, thank you. Good evening, President Smith, Dr. Kane, board members. Tonight, we are just going to touch base. There's a lot of um, funding wordage out there and kind of clarify for what the different funding is that's available. Under Kerwin, now it's being called Blueprint for Maryland's Future. And here is the history. It's under House Bill 1376. And I'm not going to read it, but as you know, um, the governor vetoed and the General Assembly over rid that veto in February 2021, enacting the law as Chapter 36 of um, 2021. MSD is still interpreting the legislation as far as the fiscal impact for us. We will know more within the next week or two. Basically, the key provisions under this is a foundation formula. Under foundation formula, this actually comes from the state and it, it is measured by the prior year full-time equivalent FTE or the three-year moving average. So that's our state aid number. For maintenance of effort, local share, it's a per pupil amount of the greater percent of the prior year's FTE or a three-year moving average. Now, um, with this legislation, it's still being looked at as far as which three-year moving average, and we should get guidance by the end of next week on that. So like when last year with COVID, we had a declining enrollment. So it won't hit us as hard because it could be a three-year average rather than just one year. Exactly. For the, that 20 number, that 920 number was lower than expected. So we won't um, see a significant increase if just using that one number. Other key, key provisions in this is the career ladder. It's a four-year career ladder that must be implemented by each county board by the year July 1st, 2023. And you know the levels are state certified teacher, teacher pursuing, pursuing a master degree. Another key provision is salary increases starting July 1st of 24 teachers in the district. Um, we must show that they receive at least 10% salary increase over the preceding five years and by fiscal year 27 all teachers must receive a salary of at least 60,000. When you say the least 10% salary increase mm -hmm. is that COLA 
it, it, they, you, you actually take a look at where they were on the scale um, at, at that time five years before to that time five years so ago. So it would, it, would, uh, it would include steps then? Correct. So that's a major increase too. Okay. Another key provision is a pre-K. It is now funded again for two, and extends through 2022. It's our four-year-old program. There's also something new called a local management system that the state is going to implement. Um, by July 23, each um, board must hire at least one dedicated employee to coordinate the use of universal system-wide LMS within the school district. And they plan to fund that position to start. I don't know going forward um, after that, but who's, who's going to fund it? Uh, the state MSDE at eighty thousand. So it could be a, a flat. Every county can get a person, and the job criteria be eighty thousand dollars. Correct. So I just wanted to touch base just briefly on because. People have talked about, well, what's the amount for Kerwin money? What's the amount for Blueprint money? And because of the veto, it's now come into this Blueprint um, formula, too. So in state aid, you have your state aid calculation, and then underneath you have your Maryland Blueprint, which was former, or former Kerwin. And this is a five-year, I mean, it's a... Correct phase in, you're right. We'll have more after MSD has interpreted all the legislation and has passed it down to the district. But just really wanted to start the conversation and, and uh, let you know what's coming down. Mm -hmm. Now, will this affect this coming year, possibly? Possibly with the, the maintenance of effort, with the maintenance of effort using that three-year moving average, depending if they want us to average 17, 18, and 19, whichever is greater, or the prior year. So we'll see that in the MO and the maintenance of effort certification form that we have to fill out each year. I mean, that could affect our upcoming year. It, correct. It could. I mean, we don't know if it yes. will, but it could. Correct. The full day pre kindergarten package, are they looking at actual physical buildings and altering them? Because that's an increase in classrooms as well as teachers. I'm yeah. not hearing as far as building. So, right, it is It is literally the classes. Um, so not new buildings or anything like that. And space is an issue. Yeah, space is definitely an issue. Okay. And, you know, if, if it were a situation where a district needed to get portables, it wouldn't be the youngest babies, the learners in the portables. It would be the older ones. So the younger ones would be in some classroom inside and some of the older ones would tra probably transition out to portables if that's what had to happen. But you know, there is a cost associated with portables. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I would like to add to the foundation numbers that was released in January was just draft numbers. So we're anticipating maybe a slight change in that. We'll know more probably by middle of May on the foundation formula calculations because it'll be finalized by then. And that will, uh, I hate to keep asking the same question, that will affect this current budget we're working on right now. Correct, the upcoming school year for 22. state, I guess they got the money, who knows what they're doing. It leaves us in limbo for a while. It, it does, till the middle of May. This has been an unprecedented year with the different funding streams that have come through. So normally it's pretty firm numbers that we get from MSDs regarding our state aid. Mm -hmm. This year, because of the different funding and programs out there, or it could be it could change slightly because of the different priorities. We may get a little more for special ed. It's just rumor what I'm hearing, but it's all up to you. And, and the big thing, too, is you know, when I hear grants, a grants, to me, it ends. If it's a funding thing like maintenance of effort, then it should be a reoccurring, and then you can use that for reoccurring expenses. But if you have a grant, it's great for that program. But once that grant runs out, you then either have to absorb it into your system or... Um, exactly. You know, get rid of it. The next one that's gaining popularity that's out there is American Rescue Plan, and that is going to be called ESSER 3. 
So the background on ESSER 3, it's an American Rescue Plan that was signed into law March 11th of 2021. It provides over, just about $2 trillion in federal funding for programs and tax policies for Maryland. They're slated to receive over uh, $3.9 billion, of which over a billion is for educational aid. Funds are provided to state agencies and school districts to help safely reopen and sustain safe operation and address the impact of the coronavirus. MSD is allocating funds to the LES based upon their representative shares of Title I Part A. So ESSER 3 is going to be tied to the, our Title I funding. The next one is a chart that shows the ESSER 3 by a different county. And ESSER 3, Queen Anne's County, is slated to receive $6.7 million. And that's the second lowest. I mean, Kent's mm -hmm. only one lower with a third of the students. So I guess this is a wealth student-based thing again. Um, it, because it, it's Title I funding, yes. You, you look at another neighboring county like Caroline, it's almost double in size, and they have less students. Now then, do we have to write a plan of what we're going to do this money? I mean, once they tell us how much we're going to receive, then staff's got to write a plan and show where it's going to go. Right, right. We're, um, there's another slide that we're going to address that or talk about that further. On okay, I'm sorry. Presentation. Under the requirements, the funds are to state agencies and schools to help them reopen. Like I said, we must reserve at least 20% of the funding to address learning loss. The remaining will mirror the CARES Act funds with the goal of social distancing, PP&E, hiring support staff to care for student health, expanding summer programs, providing emotional support, social and emotional support, supplying technology, internet, broadband, access to underserved students. The timeline for ESSER 3 is through the award letter through September 30th of 23. There's a possible extension to 24 with a tighter ruling. Um, available funds, once Maryland receives them, they have 60 days to uh, push them to the school districts. The process that we use for ESSER 2, I think Dr. Kane was thinking about using the same thing for ESSER 3, which we solicit requests from principal supervisors, district leaders, we review and prioritize those requests like we did for ESSER 2. We have just gotten our allocation amount. We have not gotten the actual application for ESSER 3. They'll have all those details on what exactly those uses are. Uh, a couple other grants that are coming down the pike that I'm hearing about that we haven't gotten guidance on is the governor has a summer school grant that he's gonna push through MSDE. So stay tuned on that. We'll let you know on that allocation too as well. And we had the reopening grant. Initially, it was awarded to us last fall for 200,000. And they, they actually uh, took enrollment from the first week in March and gave us credit for students in the school. So it bumped it up to a little over 400,000. And of that reopening grant, instead of absorbing locally that broadband and internet, that is actually in, in the reopening grant now, too, so we didn't have to pay for it through local or unrestricted funds. So when will a board see the ESSER 3, what we plan on doing with this? I mean, because it, it's about a three-year, I mean, it's, it's going to be over th two or three years. Correct. The, the application, I'm hearing it's going to be released next week. Okay. And and usually it's it's a turnaround of a, uh, a month. You, so we have 30 days, so we'll have, everybody have plenty of time to. Yes, and one, one thing that we're implementing with ESSER 2 is that the the staff that who applied, who applied for ESSER 2 and did not get funded, because we had a smaller amount compared to other counties, a little over 3 million for ESSER 2, that uh, we're gonna send them a letter and with other possible funding sources too, and it could include ESSER three as well. So, um, there's other grants too that we're looking to apply for so we need to get communication back to the people who requested the funds and, and get what they needed order. And a lot of that's principles since the people like that that have each school and each school is a little different. Mm -hmm. 
So back to your question, yes, there will be a monitoring um, procedure. MSDE is putting together a uh, monitoring committee mm -hmm. that will monitor all these grant funds in three different phases. And the first phase actually starts next month in May, and that's like they call it the readiness phase. Uh, that will impl that will be monitoring what how we plan to implement the dollars when we get them. The second phase actually is implementation, and the third phase has to do with um, analysis of the results. But we'll be establishing a plan, and uh, there will actually be some on-site visits from MSDE, so they'll come out and take a look at some things, including we may see them for um, summer school. So uh, they'll have some in-person and some virtual monitoring sessions with us and um, and and we'll submit a plan and and we'll monitor it we'll set some guidelines and some goals and and that'll go back and they'll give us on time feedback so the plan goes out maybe in the next 30 days and then they will look at it and I guess make sure we're consistent with all 23 not the good they'll give us some ideas just like you just saw here okay. what you can spend the dollars on we poll our staff we see what is needed if there was something that they needed and did not get put into SR2 Two. we see if we can put it in SR3 plus whatever their other needs are we can look at some things like if there are some HVAC needs that we may have or, or even windows or something like that some of that may be able to, to go into this type of a grant but definitely PPE learning um, materials for summer school and beyond so there are some things that uh, well, no, no, I mean not mine but they look at it and then but our but our principals and the superintendent can look at this what's the need for our county yes okay mm -hmm. and we can definitely send it like we did the SR2 too so you can see um, yeah, what was just like, yeah. the request mm -hmm. We just wanted to give you an update of the different funding that's coming down the pike in our way and provide more detail when we have it. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Ms. Towers. Ms. Towers, just real quick, and it's nothing to do with Queen Anne's County, but on your slide three, the very last one is SEED, S-E-E-D. Who is that? Uh, it, it could be, uh, it's LEA too. Um, other abbreviations, <coughs> school educational agencies too okay. as well. Okay, thank you. Next one, Dr. King. Yep. All right, so the next one we have before you is the transfer request. The transfer request is ending March 29th. And in that transfer request, as you recall, we had under major category administration, and this is going to be transfer within the different, or two different categories, not within. So it's two different categories. So under administration, we are seeking that 109,510 from the savings from operation of plant be moved to administration of uh, contract services. The next one is mid-level administration, and this is a housekeeping issue. There was a position for a supervisor in instructional salaries that they should be in mid-level administration salaries of 70000 So the second request is to reclassify that mid-level administration supervisor salary to the proper category. So are you requesting from us is a motion to move forward to send this over? Yes, please. I make a motion to um, tell to give Ms. Towers the uh, power to send the request for the uh, approval for transfer for budget amendment number two, FY21. I have a second. Second. And for discussion, I think everybody received details on the uh, administrative contract services. Everybody looked at that and saw what they needed, the questions were asked last time. Do you have any other discussion on this? I have a motion. All those in favor by say aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving down. Uh, now, uh, we have uh, been involved with our superintendent search. Uh, Ms. Harper, would you like to give us an update on that? I would. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Um, the um, board members received, well, MABE received uh, eight applicants for the superintendent. Um, 
seven of which uh, were reviewed. One had already found another job. Five of those were in interviewed in the first round. Um, we're down to three now, uh, which we have interviewed again. And these three are moving forward uh, to be considered for the superintendent position. Dr. Susan Brown is the Executive Director for Curriculum Instruction and Assessment for Hartford County Schools in Bel Air, Maryland. She has served as a top-ranking instructional leader for the school system since 2013. Dr. Brown holds an associate degree in general studies from Hartford Community College, a bachelor's degree in elementary education from Towson University, a master's degree in administration and supervision from Loyola University, and a doctorate degree, doctoral degree in education leadership and innovation from Wilmington University. She is a veteran educator with 29 years experience in Hartford County Schools and a variety of classroom leadership positions, including middle school, mathematics teacher, and department chair, teacher mentor, coordinator of, of intervention. And she is an adjunct in instructor for uh, Notre Dame of Maryland University. Dr. Andre Gailman has dedicated uh, has been dedicated to serving the needs of students for over 20 years with a history of employing a, re a results-oriented business approach in addition to strong communication and leadership skills. He is a transparent instructional leader who always makes decisions based on the best interests of students. He has he graduated from Montgomery County, Maryland Public Schools. He went on to obtain his undergraduate degree from the University of Maryland College Park, pursuing his master's degree at Johns Hopkins University and his doctoral doctoral degree at Bowie State University. And he currently lives in Florida. Dr. Patricia Salins was appointed interim superintendent of Caroline County Schools in 2016 and was named superintendent in 2017. A native of Tawba County, she earned her bachelor's degree in elementary education and master's degree in administration and supervision from Salisbury University. She began her career in Dorchester County as a social studies teacher and subsequently became an administrator in that county. In 2006, she was hired by Caroline, Caroline County Schools and became their superintendent. She earned her doctorate in leadership and innovation from Wilmington University in 2007. And the board looks forward to meeting with these esteemed candidates in the near future. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on to uh, future meetings and events. We have our regular meeting for May 5th, school board meeting. Uh, 19th will be our work session, and June the 20th will be our uh, school board meeting, final one for this year, or this fiscal year anyway. Mr. Smith, may I make a, a recommendation that at the next board meeting we approve the meeting schedule? for 2021-22. Yeah, everybody got that. There was a couple there in July. You know, everybody, everybody look at that and uh, get get to us, make sure we have enough time. Make sure that's on the, the yeah, agenda. we'll put that for... on the agenda. Okay, thank you. Okay, do I have any other discussion? Dr. Kane, anything? No. Nope. Anything board members? No. Nope. Mm -hmm. Okay, do I have a I'd like to make to... a motion to reconvene in closed session before going into executive session. Have a second. Second. All those uh, singly saying aye. 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 Has it five zero? That's end of our meeting uh, for this evening. Thank you.